Greetings to every one of us. Thank you for taking your time to being with us today. May we pray as we begin this service. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you for everyone who has made their time to be with us today. My God, thank you for your word. Thank you for the way that you are going to help us, that you are going to lead us through your word. Thank you for the time, my God, that we will spend um, together before you. We want to give you glory, honor, and praise, O oh God, even today. Thank you, O oh God, that you are faithful and faithful to the very end. Today we want to talk about evangelism. Every one of us is expected to be active in evangelism in one way or another. We are all expected to, to be busy in the kingdom of God. And we will use the example of the ant where we will want to consider the ways of the ant. In evangelism, it doesn't matter whether we feel like it or we don't. Still, God expects us to go out and stand out for him. To go out and be what um, he wants us to be uh, to the world for him. We will read from Proverbs chapter 6 from verse 4 to verse 11. It starts um, by saying, Give not sleep to thine eyes nor slumber to your eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter and as a bird from the fowler. Go to the ant. That is verse 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provides her meat in summer and gathers her food in the harvest. How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When will thou rise from thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. So the Bible tells us that we are to go to the end. The end has a lesson for us. And today we want to be wise and take the lesson from the end. It says, go to the end, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. So that's Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. This is an encouragement um, to be patient, to be hardworking, to be persevering, to be thoughtful for the present and for the future. The Lord expects us to be soul winners. Every one of us has to be a soul winner. And God's, um, God expects us um, to be active, to um, begin to run around and be like the end. God has revealed himself through nature. There are times when we go, we need to go to the end as Christians and learn from nature. This message um, came to um, me sometime just after the, um, the leaders retreat when Apostle Ken prayed for us to um, um, as we were now um, living for Bulawayo and um, then um, he did um, his traditional amen um, at the end of the prayer. And um, during that time, I was um, looking um, to the ground, and then suddenly I saw an end. And suddenly, a scripture, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6, came to my mind. And after I got home, I began to um, look for ends. I began to um, look for them in the house. I began to look um, for the ants in the garden. I began to look for ants um, in the yard. 
I began to move around and um, I wanted to learn from the ants. And so one day I saw this ant, I began to follow it. And um, as I was following it, I um, would say to it, you ant, I need to follow you. I need to know um, a bit more about you because I was rebuked um, because of you. Because of you, I was told that I am a sluggard. I was told that I am lazy because of you. So I want to know as much about you as possible. I want to know the reason why I was um, referred to as sluggard. So um, I would then begin to follow um, this um, and this and, and then it um, got um, in, into a war. And um, which was um, to be um, um, the, um, her house or um, uh, his house. And when they were coming out later, I couldn't tell whether it was the one that I was speaking to earlier on or it was um, another. But um, the lesson on the end had begun. So we are told that these ends are self motivating, they have self motivation, they have very little supervision around them. Ants have no master. They are self-monitoring, self-regulating, yet they are so responsible. So that's what I began to understand from the ant. And um, the ant works hard and you won't find them sitting or you won't find them seated any time during the day. You would find them just moving around um, in this direction and um, in that direction, carrying this and carrying that. And um, then I began to think, how many times do I look at myself and um, want to rest? How many times do I look at myself and just say, others will do it? How many times do I just um, say, it's too hot or it's too cold and I cannot um, wake um, today? How many times do I give excuses um, around the things that I ought to be doing? And um, many of us um, would try to run away from work, would dodge work in um, this way or that way. And whenever we, have, um, we, we get convenience, we would run away um, from work. I discovered that ants would um, cross a river during the, the rain season when I began to um, look um, and study the end. Sometimes it would rain so much um, in Bulawai and um, ants would be overtaken by the floods. But the ants would always strategize. You would just find them as a big heap or just as a big block floating on the water. So ants, um, would, um, when they want to um, survive, they just come together. The Bible um, tells us in um, the Psalms chapter 133 that we are to be in unity. We are to come together. When we are together, when we do everything that we do together, the Bible tells us that God commands a blessing. So when we allow um, the oil um, of um, his spirit to flow from the top um, of um, the, the head, as it were, the head of Aaron, um, coming down um, his beard, coming down um, his robes, and um, touching each and every one of us as we become one, as we become united. The Bible tells us that he commands a blessing. And um, the, um, I would find that um, the, these ants would be together and they would float. They would not be carried away uh, the, by the by the water in that direction or that, but they would just be floating gracefully um, um, on top of the water. So many times, um, if um, it were to be just one end, it would panic. 
It would be in panic and it would not um, perform what it, um, what it would um, need it um, to have performed. But we find that when they come together, they have strength together. There is strength in unity. And um, we need to understand that in evangelism, as we go out, as we aim at souls, we need um, to be united. We need to be people that um, have a single mind and a single heart and um, we come together for this purpose, the purpose being to win souls for the kingdom, to win souls for our God. And um, the end takes time um, to make a bridge. So th- I have also discovered that they come together. Sometimes they want to move from this one point A to um, a point B. And um, they then um, discover that uh, there is um, a gap in between. Maybe they want to move um, from a tree to a rock and um, there is a gap um, there. And now if um, an ant is to try to to, to fly to the rock, it won't um, be able to because it's too light. It will be um, blown away by the wind and um, it it might not um, it's too short. It cannot cross over to the other end. So what ants would then do is they would build a bridge. They would um, 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 begin to um, hold each other um, by, um, by their necks, um, by, by their waist, and um, they would hold each other and um, form a bridge so that um, they are able to, um, to move from this one tree um, to the rock. And while they are forming um, that bridge, you then find that others would be moving on top so they can be walking um, on top and um, on top of that bridge. So the ant can actually bridge up an area. So there can be an area that um, is void um, in between and it can only be bridged when they come in unity, when they um, they handle each other um, well and um, they um, unite and they make a bridge. And the Bible tells us in Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 that I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me and the land that I should not destroy it and I found none. So God um, has been um, seeking for people that um, would um, come together, make a a bridge, come together and work a bridge and build a hedge um, so that um, that um, they would be in that gap. And when they are in that gap, that God would um, then not um, destroy the land so that God um, would have um, the communication between this point A and this point um, C. So, and um, that place can be bridged by um, you or it can be bridged by um, me as we come together and uh, we build this bridge. And this bridge would um, allow traffic um, uh, to move in between. And now the Bible um, tells us in um, Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 that um, I sought um, for a man among them that should um, make up the hedge, that, um, st- that would stand in the gap uh, between me or before me and the land, and I found none. God is looking um, for a person. He's looking for me. He's looking for you who would stand in the gap between God and a dying world, between God and a people that are perishing. So as we come before God, and begin to intercede for the people. Begin to plead with God for those that are perishing. Begin to plead with God for those um, that are wasting away and um, are not seeing the grace of God. God is looking for those people that um, would uh, make up the hedge and um, stand within the gap. And um, you can be that person um, who God is looking for. And you can be that person who will make up the hedge. God is looking for the bridge. 
And um, as that bridge is built, then normal life um, can um, proceed. Normal life can take, um, can take place because there will be a bridge. And that um, the bridge would allow people to pass through um, and do business, would allow people to pass through and um, enjoy life, would allow people to pass through and um, begin to see a side of life they had never seen before because there would be a bridge. God is looking for that person who will um, make up the hedge, who will um, be part of the bridge. And as we may um, resolve to go and um, find the lost, as we resolve to intercede for the lost, as we resolve um, to make um, that bridge, to make that hedge, God will take pleasure in us. And one other thing that is important um, as we look at evangelism is teamwork. We need to be people of a teamwork. And that we find with the end. The end, um, they um, would um, hunt, and after hunting, they may uh, meet with this um, uh, with this diet that they may um, they would have chosen that um, this is what we um, we have hunted this is what we have found um, uh, in the field um, this is what we have found in the forest and then they come together they come around that and they begin to pull um, that which they have found they begin to pull their harvest um, into their barn so they would um, pull that together into the underground barn. And um, the underground barn is the church. We need um, to together go out and pull people um, together. So we do it together. As a team, we um, another um, would um, work um, from the east, another from the north, another from the south, uh, from the west, from the southwest, and so forth. So we come together and um, pull around um, the, the, this um, uh, the, um, uh, animal or this um, hunted um, that we have found and we then say we want to pull this into the house of the Lord. We want to bring this uh, person into the house of the Lord. We want to bring this family into the house of the Lord. It's not an individual thing but we do it together. We do it um, as a family. We do it as a people. God wants us to evangelize as um, a people together, as we come together, we pull our resources together, we pull our efforts together, we, um, we pull our strength together, we then go out and evangelize and bring that into the house of the Lord. And um, God will then take pleasure in us. The Bible will tell us um, that um, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, that... Um, you, when um, the Spirit has come upon you, you shall be my witnesses. So it's plural. God wants us to be his witnesses. It's not that um, it's one person who needs to go out and be a witness, but all of us need to go out and be witnesses um, for the kingdom and be witnesses for our God. And um, we then um, would witness in Jerusalem, in Judea, and um, to um, the utmost um, the parts of the earth. So we need to move out together and um, God um, he has sent us together and God um, he has made us so important uh, in, um, in his purposes, in his plans. And um, we also see reliance on God. God wants us to rely on him. The ants rely on on God. They, they, they rely um, on the supernatural. They rely um, on powers that are above them. In Acts chapter 27 verse 29 we are told um, that so it, um, it was Paul um, as they were in that ship and um, the ship was um, going through um, a very um, a ter a terrible time, uh, dangerous times um, they were just about to be um, the shipwrecked. The Bible tells us that fearing lest we should um, have fallen upon the rock they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. So, 
they relied on God. They did whatsoever they could do and then they waited for day. They wished for day. They knew that they had done their part and now it was for God to do his part. So God will, would always um, do his part when we allow him to do his part. So we then um, find that ants would um, go for um, dependence on God. They um, use um, the sheer force, force that is above what um, they, um, they can allow, what they, can, they have. So that is dependence on the Holy Ghost. And um, with that, we find um, in Acts chapter 1, um, verse 8, when the, well, I just mentioned earlier on that when the Holy Ghost, um, the, the Lord says, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, um, you will be my witnesses. So when the power of God comes upon, then we become his witnesses. Ants can pull a piece of bread or an insect or anything which is Ten times more than its own weight. So we find that ants can actually lift up um, something which is ten times more than its weight. And that can only be um, an external force. So we should um, be so dependent on God that we would be ready to do things that are much more than our own, um, within our own ability. That we can say, God... Through you, I will um, jump over a mountain. I will jump over a wall. Through you, I will do this. I, I, I will not be limited. So the ends will um, actually say, we are not limited. Nothing can limit me. I cannot be held back. I will move on. I will press on. I will um, do whatsoever the Lord expects me to do. So we do much more than we are expected. We do much more than people think we could ever do. And the Christian today would say, it is impossible. I cannot do this. This is impossible. But God wants us to go for the impossibles. God wants us to do those things that are normally not impossible. As we rely on his power, as we rely on his ability, as we rely on what he only can do. Because um, if we rely on our own power, then we will not do anything. We would not um, even wake up because it's too cold. We would not um, work during the day because it's too hot. We would not do things because it's raining. But when we do things in the power of God, then we would begin to do those things that are normally um, seen as impossible and we need to be willing to take up that uh, which is normally impossible and God will assist us um, through that. So doing, doing the impossible, um, they believe God can transport them even aerially. So we have seen ants um, actually jumping from a tree leaf onto the ground, sometimes onto a rock, they can do so when they, um, they, they come together and unite. Um, and um, they increase um, a bit on their weight. Uh, they, can, um, they, they can actually jump from that leaf uh, to, to, um, to a rock. But if it is just one it cannot do so because um, the, the, the wind can take it away or it can fall um, onto the ground and um, any other, um, it can actually uh, fall prey uh, to predators. But when um, they, they come together, they can actually jump aerially. They can um, move, um, uh, they can use uh, the, the power of their weight um, uh, to jump from a leaf to, um, a, to, um, to a rock. So ants um, work smart. Um, they do not um, just expose themselves to danger all the time. They can calculate. So instead of maybe they could actually go down the, um, the, the tree, move onto the ground and move up um, that rock. But that root can be dangerous. So what, um, does, um, the, what do the ants do? They calculate and then say, well, instead of um, going through the dangerous route, why don't we just um, um, unite and then jump together as a team? And then they, um, they do so um, to um, their advantage and their, they, they, they um, become um, better they, um, in, that, in that aggression. They become more aggressive um, as it were. So the ants also have learned to occupy. The Bible says, occupy till I come. 
The end is persistent. The end will always come back. You can um, just uh, try to brush it away um, and do this to it, but the end will always come back. The end is persistent. In evangelism, we need to be persistent. So even if um, we receive a no for um, the first time, or a no the second time, a no the third time, we can still come back. The end is persistent. It does not just give up. We do not um, need to just um, give up because we have witnessed to this person and they have said, no, I cannot do it. I'm, I cannot I'm not take your God. I do not like your God. And then we cannot just give up on, on that. We may need to prepare to come again a second time, a third time, a fourth time, a, um, a thirteenth time. And then one thing about ants is that they will enter every home. Um, I have um, moved in homes, different homes, in rural areas, in urban areas, and you find that there are ants. You know, just um, the ants come, they do not wait to be invited. They, um, they do not um, wait um, for the people to say, now it's time for ants to come. They just get into every home. They just um, make it a point that they, they, they just get there. They just knock and um, they, they come in. We need to be that aggressive where we just get into every home. Not every home will invite us. Not every person um, would say, please come and um, pray for me. But we need to take the step. We need to move and um, get into the homes. Um, pray for people in those homes. Um, ask them to um, to, um, to, to, to say yes to the Lord Jesus. So the ant will get into every home and sometimes they, the ant, uh, in, the, in the homes that they get into, they actually do not um, uh, care whether the, the person is rich or the person is poor. You will find ants in the, in the homes of the poor. You will find ants in the homes of the rich. So Ants just get into any home, and we need uh, to go to the end. You sluggard, go to the end. Go and learn from the end. We need to be found in every home. We need um, to be found and um, given um, to the purposes of God as we um, make it a point that um, we, we take our time in every home. So ants um, move um, whether it is um, winter, they are found in, in that home. Whether it is um, sun, they are found in that home. So they are in, they move in boldness. So they are bold. Ants are bold. The Bible tells us um, in Acts chapter four that there is something that um, they um, discovered about the apostles and um, that um, they knew that these guys were not learned. They knew that these guys um, did not go to, um, to school much but one thing they noticed about them is that they were bold. God um, requires that um, we take up um, the boldness from him. We approach um, this world in boldness just as we approach his throne um, with boldness we also need to approach um, the, the, the world in boldness. We need to be bold and um, declare um, that God is God. We need to declare that God is a healer. We need to declare that God can save people. We need to declare that regardless of what they are, regardless of what they do, God can still um, uh, do things in their lives. So boldness is what we need um, We need to do. And um, the ants are bold because um, you see the ant, it just gets um, around and um, it doesn't matter whether you are a big person or you are a small person, the ants can still bite you. They just get there and they just, they just can bite you regardless of um, who you are, regardless of how big you are. The ants can still just bite you. They are bold. So they are not um, terrified by um, someone's stature. They are not terrified by someone's manners. They are not terrified by someone's education. They can just bite. So same applies in evangelism. We need to just go and bite. We just need to go and um, just um, take that chunk um, on, on, on people. And um, we need to just go to them and tell them that Jesus is Lord. Um, regardless of um, who they are, regardless of what um, they have achieved in life, regardless of what they have not achieved in life, we still need um, to get to people and tell them about Jesus, that Jesus can do something in their lives and that um, Jesus can change um, their lives. So, 
And then the other thing is that the ant will always lead you to his or her home. That's one thing I found about the ant. They always lead you to their home. The, like the ant that I was following at, the, at first, um, it, it led me um, to, um, to, to, to um, its home. And um, the ants will always do so. We need to always lead people to our home. They need to find, uh, they need to be led to where we fellowship. They need to be led to, um, to our church. So that's what we need to do. Lead um, the people to your home. Lead, um, lead people to your family. So the ant will always lead you um, to um, its home. And um, the other thing that we find um, with um, the ant is that they are not afraid of any terrain. Um, the um, ants will be um, there at um, any terrain. They will fight from any terrain. The Bible tells us in um, the First Chronicles chapter 11, verse 12, that and after him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, who was one of the three mighties. He was with David at, at Pass of the Dominion. And um, there were Philistines gathered for battle where there was a parcel of ground full of barley. And the people fled. You know, the people would flee because they knew that um, carrying out warfare on um, a parcel, on a piece of land that is full of barley um, is no joke. That's not um, a terrain um, you, can just, uh, you can fight from because it's, it's dangerous. Um, you, you can fall down and um, you, you, you can be cut through. Um, they can cut your head off. No, and so it's, um, it's, it's not um, a terrain that you can um, easily fight from. And um, we then find that um, the, the, these guys were ready. And Elias and the David who, who would be ready to fight um, from that ground, from that terrain, um, which was um, slippery, um, which um, was... Um, uh, in, um, it was in such a way that um, you, you cannot just balance up. Um, the things would not just balance up. You would not um, just uh, um, stand on your ground and be stayed because um, rough on the terrain. But um, Elias and uh, David and, and the mighty um, ones um, would then um, go for that terrain. And um, the Bible tells us that and they slew the Philistines. The, the, the ant will not um, fear the terrain. It will not say, uh, this terrain is too hard um, for me. Um, they will not say, um, maybe um, I'm, I'm, I may die when I am there. But um, warriors do not consider their lives as dear to them. We um, need not to consider our lives as dear uh, to us. But um, all things that we do should be for the kingdom. Even when the terrain is not friendly, we should still fight. So the terrain might not be um, friendly politically, but we should still win souls. The terrain might not be friendly economically, but we should still win souls. The terrain may not be um, friendly socially, but still we should win souls. So here we find um, the mighty men who were ready to fight for God regardless of um, the terrain regardless of the conditions. So we need to be people that are ready um, to fight for God regardless of the conditions. And when um, th th that happens, we then find that um, the, the ant is um, willing to push forward. It doesn't matter how many people are against you. It doesn't matter how many people you need to win, but you just have to push forward. And um, also, we find that ants value fellowship. They meet, they greet, they plan. So the answer would always meet 
and hug. So they value fellowship. And as we love one another, as we spend time with one another, the Bible tells us that God commands a blessing and that um, the world will also see that um, we, we love the Lord. As the world um, see that we love each other, they will be attracted um, to, um, to us. That's what the Bible tells us. So um, as we love one another, God will add more um, to us. So that becomes important. So fellowship um, has to be something that is um, the, the, that we do on a daily basis and um, the um, ants also would metamorphosize. That's one thing about the ant. The um, Ants, um, most of the ants that we see uh, are actually female ants. So the male ants, there are very few um, male ants. Um, most of those that we see are all um, female. And they w- w- would move around in a column. Um, they are normally what we call worker. They are worker ants. And um, they move around in a column um, working, um, looking for food, um, doing many other things. So they do a lot of things um, in, in their kingdom um, to, to make sure that the kingdom um, progresses, to make sure that the kingdom prospers. So they um, would do so. And now when they are in a column, maybe you have noticed um, is, um, they, they are moving in this particular direction there will be a one that um, begins to move in an opposite direction. And um, it will be hugging, kissing um, all the others. And um, while um, it is doing so, it's actually communicating. It may be asking, um, are you a worker? Um, and or you are a warrior and, and um, so this one may be saying I am a worker um, another one would say I am a worker I am a worker and um, if um, she sees that um, there are a lot of worker ants then she then joins um, the, the, the column at another point at a certain point and um, she, as she joins the column she metamorphosizes to become a warrior. So there is um, a change that happens chemically, bodily, and everything within the end. Um, and then uh, this end becomes a warrior end. And it begins to protect those workers. So there are times where um, as others are in the field, um, they are working um, in the field and they are um, spending their time um, winning souls. And then there are others that um, become warrior, um, warrior ants. And um, they stand um, for, for others in the camp. They intercede. They spend um, the time before God and um, for others. They fight um, for others and so forth. So that as territories continue to be one, God um, will be glorified. So we see um, a lot of um, that happening. And um, so the worker warriors, they work um, and um, they are also protected by these um, warrior ones. And the ants are versatile. God wants us to be people that are versatile. People that can use the left hand and can use the right hand. So we need to be able to be versatile in the kingdom. We need to uh, be able to uh, do this and that and um, uh, to um, uh, be able to bring in souls, to pray for souls, and uh, to um, usher souls into the kingdom, to be able to um, lead um, souls um, into, into worship. So we need um, uh, to uh, be able to do that. And um, also ants, can calculate risk. They believe in their leaders. So sometimes the ants would see that now it's time for us to take a new territory. It's time for us to move into a new territory. You know, ants are the only ones, or they are the ones, we normally call that a colony of ants. Ants are called a colony. So they are a colony. They are a colony because they colonize. You know, colonization is not um, a bad term in the kingdom. We can actually colonize. We need to be people that are able to colonize. So that's how the kingdom expands, by colonization. So we need to be people with a colonization mind, a colonization mentality. Um, and, um, so the ants, when they want to go and colonize um, another um, a territory, they 
would group. Maybe it's a territory that is beyond a river. So they would group. And um, there are some leader uh, ants that would um, tell, that would calculate and say, we can actually go to this part of the river and throw ourselves on, onto the river on that part. If we do so, because they are engineer um, the souls and um, the engineer ants, they can, they, we can actually um, drop off on the other end, um, on the bank, on that end, if we, um, we cast ourselves on that, um, at the, the, this altitude, and, um, at this direction, and um, maybe um, just on this part of the river, we can actually um, be blown by the wind um, in that direction uh, while we are, we are moving downstream, and we will um, find ourselves on the other bank after a kilometer or after two kilometers, whatever. So they calculate and they um, do so. And after that, they go and colonize the place. So we need to be people that colonize, or the, that um, take that move aggressively and colonize lands, that move aggressively and take territories, that move aggressively and bring in souls. So we need to be people that are aggressive, that would calculate and um, move like that. And um, ants are also goal setters. So we need to um, be able to set goals and um, know that um, um, after six months this is what we're expecting and um, we're expecting to see it uh, coming to, um, uh, to being. For instance, um, after um, this year we are looking at um, 700 souls so we just have to um, move towards 700 souls. Everything that we do as we set our goals as we strategize, we are looking at the 700 that we want to see by the end of the year and that we are committed to and we will do so we give ourselves to that. So that's what God um, expects from us and um, as um, I close, um, we look at um, Romans chapter 1 verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So like the end, we should not be ashamed of the gospel. We should actually be proud of the gospel. We should actually be so happy that we have been saved by the gospel and we will live for the gospel. We are happy that we have been saved um, through uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and we will lead many other people um, to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says go ye therefore and preach um, the gospel. So we want to go and preach. Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 verse 20. Go ye therefore and um, teach of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for the time that you have given us. We thank you, O God, that you want us to win souls and win souls and win souls and win souls and see the expansion of the kingdom of God, that the kingdom of God may expand. Father, that um, we pray that it may not expand when we are dead, when we have gone out of uh, uh, after our lives, but want to see it expanding in our lifetime. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen.